Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to be painting a New York City cityscape uh, with grayscale. It'll be pretty easy, I think. We're going to use uh, simple tools, credit cards, palette knife, that kind of thing. So I uh, hope you can join me. Get inspired to try this yourself. Let's get started. So this is my example. Uh, we I did this uh, with credit cards and uh, just a couple colors here. I used titanium white and black and a little bit of burnt umber to warm it up. Uh, and I think I'm going to show you at the end how you can add some color to this. So we'll do it in grayscale and then I will add some color over the top with the glaze afterwards. So I think it uh, should be interesting. In case you want to add color, then you can. And if you don't want to, we can leave it gray. And you can do this with any uh, cityscape that you want, you know, so you don't have to do New York City. If you have another city that you want, I would just print out the photograph in black and white like I did here so that you can kind of see the values. And that's really all you need to do um, if you want to adjust it for your own city. Okay, I am mixing white with black and brown, and we're going to be just doing uh, different um, layers, different values of this. So I will mix some different colors here, different not colors values out of those three colors. And this is the background here for the top part is kind of a light to medium gray so it's not very dark in value it's pretty got a lot of white in it so and I'm just going to be putting it on side to side here and streaking it and you're definitely going to have to let me know that I'm in camera honey because I'm not going to be able to see it tonight okay that's fine thank you <laughs> Okay, grabbing more white. I'm going to do more white kind of under behind the buildings here. So I'm just going to add that while it's wet. Streak that in. I'm just using a large flat brush. Really doesn't have to be anything special. Just any kind of flat brush will do. This one is my Princeton number 10 bright. That's in the video description. I've got all the colors and paints that I'm using down paints and brushes down in the description so I actually forgot to add my pellet knives to that though I'll have to do that later but if you go to the brush guys I've got a whole list of different brushes and pellet knives um, the link down down in the description so if you want to know kind of what brushes I'm using those are all listed down there except for the pellet knives <laughs> but those will get added tonight Okay, so as I get down here, I'm not really worried too much. I'm going to, about the third mark, I went a little bit lower than the third here, and I'm going to grab a little bit of black and brown and mix a little bit darker value here with it. And oh, Maybe not quite that dark. Maybe just like one or two shades darker than this. There we go. And this first part, I'm just going to use paint. It would use the brush. It'll make it easier um, than having to try to fill in the whole thing with the palette knives because um, that can take a long time. So, I mean, if you wanted to do it that way, you could, but this just saves some time, gets the paint the first layer of paint on the canvas for us. Oh, I'm getting these little flecks of paint. I must have had some stuck on the outside of my tube of paint. So I had my groups on Facebook vote on whether we did this in grayscale or color. We are going to and ombre was a close second. So if you don't not familiar with ombre, I think I'm saying that right. Um, like friend? No, not ombre. Mm, mi amigo, mi hombre, hombre, the man. Hombre. <laughs> <laughs> O-M-B-R-E. Uh, it means basically just um, grad, 
gradation of color from uh, light to light to dark or dark to light. So then, why not just say that? Because it's longer than just saying ombre, so it's but easier. If, and if it's you a, like a don't know how to say it. Technical <laughs> art term sounds. Oh, sounds it, it better, sounds artsy. I'm sounds sorry. More artsy. Ombre. 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 Not ombre, honey. Okay, I feel so like I need to say it with a Spanish getting accent. Getting that, <laughs> shut, shut up. It's lucky that I'm even able to paint tonight with as many distractions that we had getting started here tonight. I'm just trying to change the lighting. This is just adding. It's just amazing. Just adding one little different thing to the mix. You know, adding the new monitor. Just now, all the lighting around where I'm at is different. You know, got a shadow from over here and weird. I, I am actually seeing my hand shadow. I can make a puppet, puppet animals. Here, let me move this out. Wait, maybe that'll help. That's better. No, it's not. <sighs> okay, good. Yeah, it's still, it's still shadow. I don't know. We're going to have to redo our lights now. It's like every time we add something new, we have to redo something else. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's all right. That's all right. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for now, my brush. And I'm going to let this dry a little bit and I'll mix up some different colors. So I've got this color going on, but I think I'm just going to mix the brown and black together and get my base dark color. So I've got more of the black than the brown and you really, you can use any black. It's not, it doesn't matter. You could even mix your own black if you wanted to and use uh, like ultramarine blue and burnt umber make a nice black. You could do that instead of using carbon black. But this will just give us kind of a warm black for our base. And that noise is really annoying, but that's all right. So I'm going to scrape that close to my white there. Actually, I'm going to scrape it away this way. Sorry. Am I keeping it in camera here? I think I am. Okay. So, I don't know. I can't see. You can't see. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take a portion of that and pull it off to the side. So this, I'm going to leave this for the darkest. And then I'm going to grab some white. Not too much. Just a little bit. That might be too much. All right. We'll try that. And we're going to add that to it. Mix that in the whole thing. And then we're going to probably could use a bigger knife for this, but that's all right. I'm going to pull some of that off, leave a little bit of that color, grab some more white, mix that in. And so each time we add a little bit more white, we're going to lighten the color. And this You could do this with um, colors instead of black and white. So if you were wanting to go for a colored monochromatic painting you could do this you know you could start out with a dark blue or something like that and then add a little bit of white to it and create these grades of color leave a little bit of that pull that aside grab some more white and i had two whites here so i have one that i'm leaving pure white and then i've got this one that i'm pulling my color off of because i knew it was going to get dirty so dirty white dirty white yep so there's that pull a little bit more off a little bit of that. what's going on i'm operating with two mice over here so i keep grabbing the wrong one <laughs> But hey, anyways, it's a good night to be painting. Yes, it is. It is, it is. But I'm not painting, but it's still a good night. Well, you could. I actually thought about it, honestly. Really? I was, if I had more time, I was thinking about moving the webcam over here and setting up, but it just wasn't enough time to no. do all that. Maybe on a Saturday. 
Well, no, Saturday paintings are way too hard. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you wanted to do the Tuesday easy painting. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to pull it off over here. Because I don't want it to get too close. Just making all these different kind of grays, and then I can pull these out when I'm putting in my buildings. It's just not quite lightening up enough. Okay. Each time adding more white. Sorry, this is kind of boring, but this will help us move faster when we, we won't have to stop to mix colors while we're working if we do this at the beginning. So we'll be glad we did this. I'm going to have to grab some of that because I'm out of my white. Okay, and then I've still got a little bit of color right there, so I may just call this fairly close to good. We'll Are the sound effects required when you're mixing no. paint? Well, it helps me, but... Okay. Well, I know that we have some beginners out there, so I didn't know <laughs> that was part of the class. It's just like kind of a bonus. Bonus special effects noises. Aww. Was that the brakes or going around the corner or what? It was just like, I hope I get that <laughs> script up there correctly. <laughs> I didn't want to get too much of my white. So ideally, I would have put my black and my white up opposite each other, not so close to each other if I thought that through, but that's okay. Probably have too many. I don't have... There we go. All right, I think that's gonna be good. We've got plenty of different colors here to choose from. We might probably need a little bit more of the really, really light gray, so I'll try. But there's, it's mostly these darker grays that are in our picture. There's a lot of the dark grays, so. I think that should do us. Get a paper towel here and wipe off my palette knife. If you've got a palette knife that's got paint stuck all over it, um, alcohol will help get it off there. So you can just spray a little bit of rubbing alcohol, not your good bourbon. I thought surely you would have a joke for that, honey, but apparently not. He's not listening no, again. No, no, I was commenting. And he's, Wait, you got, you got weird paint on your picture there now what are you talking about you like white streaks on your oh i talked i touched my uh, i must have touched my thing on there mm. and i was or there's paint on there was paint on the bottom <laughs> of it and i touched it so you see. can use your palette to paint with too that's Don't pretty cool that. no no okay just wipe it off and it's pulling my paint <laughs> That's fine. It's a good thing this is impressionist. Because I'm impressed. You're impressed? Yeah. Good. Thank you. But um bum. You know what? Okay. I'm I have not, not been paying attention to chat really, I so have, Huh? I have not been paying attention to chat, so I have no idea if we have any questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got questions during the live show, you can post those now and Mark will hopefully be paying attention here and I'm let me know. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and use the smaller brush. This is my um, six bright, it's about a half inch brush or so. And I'm just going to lightly kind of sketch in as I go, very random. These don't have to be perfect, but I'm just gonna go by my photograph here. There's just a few. And I'm putting in these dark colors first because they will give us something to work off of. This one is the kind of third darkest. I'm not going all the way black because I want to use some black later. So go all the way down to that. And I did want to tape off this bottom edge right now. Um, no, actually I'm gonna wait. I'll do that later. 
I'm trying to remember how I did it. I just did it. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's going to be one of those nights. Maybe this has got like a tower. These are all kind of about the same height here. They're not very tall. Not super tall or like right here. I can go for some lighter colors on some of these. But I'm not going to worry about the value too much at this point. I'm just trying to get in the shapes. We can kind of do it. But if you if you need to have a little bit of definition between the buildings so you can remember where they are, you can do that. And we'll put in the lighter colors in front later because there's all kinds of buildings. I'm mainly just looking at this part. If you're just looking at the outline, in fact, you could you could trace it and trace it onto your canvas if you wanted to for this part and get a good exact um, rendering. This goes up to, okay, so if this is my drawing and this is the thirds, this goes just above the thirds. So here's my canvas thirds. So this is going to go just to about right here. I'm trying to get it straight. And if you want to, you could use tape for this. Like if you, but um, the thing with the palette knife that I like um, and that makes it approachable for beginners is that you it's pretty messy. If you look at mine, my outlines are not very clean. Um, the main thing is just kind of getting these vertical shapes correct. You don't want them to tilt, but um, the rest of it is very kind of messy um, and that's sort of the beauty of it I think uh, kind of letting go and just letting the process happen and seeing what happens sometimes we get very caught up in results when we're painting and making it look a certain way that we want it to look which is fine and I do that too but sometimes it's good to just kind of get out our paints and play and this is kind of a play project where we can just let loose let our stress go and kind of embrace whatever happens with the painting. Okay, so there's another building tucked in right here. I'll just leave that out so you can see what I'm looking at. There's a dome on this one. I don't think, are these big and tall enough? That is at the third. These are, there's our halfway mark. So these are just above halfway. So if I find my halfway mark, yep. So these need to go up a little bit higher. I thought so. Just a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, so this building is up here want to get our proportions right for this part. This is the more tedious part because we just going to have to kind of pay attention to our drawing, get this part right, and then the rest of it will kind of fall into place if we take our time like this. What you doing, hon? You doing okay? I'm doing good. Just making sure Everything's going good on your side. Everything's fine. Since you weren't looking up, I took advantage to make sure you're on camera. Thank you. So somebody did have a question earlier, and okay. some people answered in chat, but I'm sure other people may have the same question. Um, zinc white. Yes. What, it, what would you use zinc white for? Zinc white's a transparent white, so it's also called mixing white because it... Um, I really don't know, um, but because I don't use it for mixing, because it doesn't um, pigment very quickly. Like if I want to lighten a color, I think the idea is that it gives a truer 
color. It does lighten somewhat, but it leaves the color um, more um, true to true to the original. It doesn't. Um, titanium white can dull the color a little bit, um, but it's mostly what I use it for is things like uh, underwater, you know, bubbles or any time that any time that you want some sort of a transparent white color, um, clouds, it works well for that kind of thing. Um, I'm trying to think if I had a project recently that I used. I know I've used it in some of my projects. I can't remember which ones, but some of my videos. Maybe the mermaid, I think, maybe. I can't remember. And this one comes up to Okay, so that one's right at the third. So there's our third. So this big white building here is going to be right up next to that one. There's a little space here. And it's going to be right at the third. So I'm just going to use my fingers and put that in there. And I think that this building is being built. It's got some, some cranes and things on top of it in my photograph. So it, I don't know if it's already been built or what shape it create, created already. I looked to see, you know, recent photographs. Uh, this one I got off of a royalty-free website. So I could use it, but I didn't find any other photographs that showed this any farther along, so I'm sure they're, it'll change. So. All right. And then down to about here, which was even with that. There's a little space, and there's this big black building that goes up to about the same level as this one. This one might be a little higher. This one and that one, yep, are about the same. Just looking at the heights of these buildings and making sure that I'm getting them incorrectly. I will have a traceable for this, so if you don't want to have to draw this, um, it'll be on Pixab uh, Pixaby. <laughs> It'll be on my Patreon site, and I have the link down in the description for those and uh, in the iCards if you're on a computer. So that's where all my new traceables are. Kind of helps us be able to buy our new monitors and stuff, all this different people supporting us on Patreon has been really awesome. We've been able to get an all new camera and new all kinds of stuff. So it's been great. Yeah, I just checked. There's 444 supporters right now. Nice. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I almost didn't do it because I was afraid nobody would want to help us. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't like asking people for money, you know. We've been doing this for free for a long time, but it is nice to be able to upgrade some equipment and actually make a little bit of a living off of it. So I appreciate that. We've got to retire Mark eventually. I can't live off of him all forever, you know. <laughs> yeah, we had to trade in the company Lamborghini. You know, right, right. Up upgrade AKA to a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't give away the secrets. <laughs> we are, yeah. We are in truck country, too, which puts us, we are a little bit out of truck and SUV country. We are so not cool. <laughs> I haven't been cool for a very long time. <laughs> the have driven minivans for at least 10 years or maybe longer. Longer because you were in college when we got our first mini man, so yeah, it, it made sense when the kids were young. Well, and when I was doing my art stuff, it was great, you know, when I was doing shows and stuff and I needed to transport 
canvases and lots of easels and things like that, it made sense too, but now not so much. So we may actually get a new regular car eventually one of these days. That'd be nice. I don't remember what that was like. I probably miss being so high up. I don't know if I could be comfortable driving down low again. Nobody cares. I don't know why we're talking about cars. Just trying to get this filled in. I'm taking a little bit more time with this than I did on my example one because I uh, just want to make sure that I get my proportions right since I'm going to give you the traceable for this. So I want it to be at least sort of accurate. Um, you could just trace the picture. Well, but the picture is not the same oh, as the canvas. Same scale? Same scale okay. yeah, as the canvas, so it's not. But you could if you if you scaled it correctly. And, you and you're gonna paint like Godzilla coming out of the water in the front or something I like don't that. Know. This is the Chrysler building, so maybe Kong, King Kong, right? Wasn't he on this building right here? Oh. Is that the Chrysler building? I think I it is. Know. I think it is. The Eiffel Tower or the the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Eiffel Tower is know, very very I'm, far away. Yeah, I know that's this. not in New York. No. I do know that. It's uh, the. Empire State Building is on the other side of the island, I guess, so, because I was looking for one that had both, but it, they're, they're really not. If you see both, they're, one's really small, so it really didn't matter. Okay, let's see. This is, I have, okay, there's that. This is up a little higher. This is up here. This is. Right here, coming out right there. And now that I've got these heights kind of figured out, then I can just kind of go, okay, which building is that equal to? And look over here and go, okay, there. doing pretty good. I think we're almost to the end here. That one's just about right there. There's some towers up here of some sort. Another tower right here. And then one right here. We're done. Boom. Thank you guys for watching. No, no, I'm joking. That's great. Let's bring in Stickman. And yeah. Time to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like done. Yes. And actually, you could be done at this point if you wanted to just do it, you know, like a silhouette. That would be fine. And I've seen it done that way. It works out great. So totally no judgment here. Do whatever works for you. Okay, I'm going to set my ruler down now and get my line straight on here. So I'm going to take some light colored. One of my lighter value sections. And we're just going to run it along that line there and get myself a good horizon line. I'm going to use some of these darker colors down in the water here. Just sort of try to get them similar. They don't have to be exactly the same shape, but just sort of try to get them about the same width and placement, about the same. We're going to, most of this is going to be Gonna be just very random, lightly painted, loosely painted. That's what I'm thinking, looking for. Loosely painted. So I'm kind of using more than just the dark colors here. Using other colors too, and when we when we start putting in some of our colors here, then we'll pull them down here. But they we're just going to get our 
space in again. Nothing. Just sitting over here minding my own business. I know, you're very restless tonight. I'm trying to answer questions in chat. Oh. Without disturbing you, but obviously I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, this little one's here. Few ones here. A bit taller. I'm trying to leave that little bit of light color there. Well, I just covered it. Nice. This one's going to go off in there. And if you notice, I'm kind of just doing them side by side or sideways, little brush strokes, and so that they look. If there's a little bit of the, and I need to, I don't mean to do that. Um, if there's a, <clears throat> a little bit of the um, I have no idea what I was going to say. And I wasn't doing anything <laughs> to distract you. <laughs> I don't have any idea what I was just going to say. Well, I had a point there, but I don't remember what it was. So could you? Oh, so that if if your brush strokes are showing, that'll look like you know water. Maybe um, this is supposed to be reflections on water, so you're wanting horizontal brush strokes here, not vertical. That's I knew I had a point. I knew I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> exactly. Man, we're getting old. <laughs> I yeah. Don't ask me to go get you something in the other room. I forget <laughs> by the time I get there. Okay, there we go. So we've already got kind of a good, and I, you notice I go, I went like a couple, maybe one shade lighter on the reflection in the water too, and that'll help. That one is weird. That's going to bug me. I need to get that straighter. It's, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, this one's not, this one's not quite lined up either now that I'm looking. So we need to get them straight off. They got they got a little tilted. That's okay. The wind's blowing a little bit. Yeah, maybe pushing the pushing the reflections. Uh, maybe that's thanks, hun. Okay, there we go. All right, now for the fun part. Now we get messy here. With our, and I really probably should be wearing gloves for this, but I don't have any close by, so we're just going to... Yeah, we can, watch, already, you, we can watch you put already. on gl gloves again. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what video did I do that? I wet my hand first. Oh, here's glove. Here we go. I'll do it. Um, yeah, wet my hand first and try to put my glove on and it got stuck. That was the guitar painting, the guitar galaxy. It was hilarious. Okay, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to use this one to start with, and we'll see if we need to move to other colors. So I'm going to start with my darker colors here. Start laying in some of those. This one is pretty dark. I'm just going to scrape up some color on one side and lay that side down, angle it a little bit, and scrape. And it should come off now. This paint might be a little bit wet in some places, so it might get, get a little sticky, but I think it should work for us. So I'm going to look at my darkest building. So here's one here that's really dark. I can pull this way. And I did this one vertical because the lines are kind of running vertical in this one. And I'll put, I'll put some lighter colors over the top, but we're just getting our darks we're in right now. This side's got a really dark right there. Okay. 
You are typing away like a storm over there. We're talking about angles over here. Angles? Well, somebody asked if uh, the length of the reflection, were, were they always longer than the actual look of the buildings? Well, I don't know. Don't make me do math. And so I was typing until you rudely interrupted me. Sorry. What were you telling me? My theory is, and I think this is correct, is it's based upon your viewing angle. That's, yeah. So the closer to the water you are, the longer the reflection will appear to be. That is true. We watched a video about that. Do you remember that? Where it was talking about reflection, reflected light, and depending on the angle. I remember that now. You said that. I can't read. There's a, it's an actual, like, phenomenon. I can't remember what it's called, though. Sorry, go ahead. Finish your uh, saying. I, I have no... Saying? I mean, no, I don't remember. Don't that, remember. that doesn't mean I... You weren't there that day. wasn't there because, remember, I rented the same movie twice. Because <laughs> I didn't remember same. that we had watched it already. <laughs> <laughs> you, party, you gave me the same birthday card two years in a row, so... Okay, maybe. Time. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Man, that rubber glove looks good in high definition, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Stop. You're a mess. Okay, pull some down here. There's these dark areas down in here. Get some of that in there. Even though some of these are solid, I'm still leaving a little bit of definition on some of these like a little bit of texture I'm not going completely solid with it I'm just trying to get my placement as close as I can on this looking at my pictures I think I'm taking a lot longer on this than I did on my example. What time is it? Ooh, 43 minutes. Wow. Okay. Let me just get going here. A little bit bugging. Okay, I'm just gonna... This is may not may not be completely accurate, so I'm gonna move a little faster. Alright, so... Dark... And most of these, it looks like the light sources come from this side. So the, most of these, this side of the buildings are dark. All right. This one's actually going to have one of our medium value darknesses. And this has got a tower right in the middle of it. Get some lighter colors going on now. There we go. Okay, I thought of a question. Okay. So Oops. somebody asked if that was a piece of an old credit card. It is. And I said yes. So my question is, mm-hmm. I noticed that you're using gift cards. Mm-hmm. Now, is there a difference because the, well, I guess you're using the short end. I was just thinking the credit card has a, has the raised, you know, relief for the numbers and the name and stuff like that uh-huh. in it. But gift cards normally are just completely flat. Right, So right. I don't know if that made a difference or not or if that would add any. Yeah, I mean, I do use the flat, but you're using the edge, so it wouldn't really matter too much anyways. Yeah. Um, I just, you just want one that's, stiff enough you know that's the main thing because they can be they can be kind of um, flimsy some of them are made out of paper so you just need to get one that's an actual whoops goodness gracious that's actual uh, plastic and you could also do this with palette knife. I tried it with palette knife and actually found that it was easier to control it with the credit card. It just, I cut them into little strips and um, I was able to get sizes that I wanted out of that way. So, um, 
using what you got around the house. There's like little windows and things in these buildings. So by doing these scrapings, it kind of makes it look like maybe there's, since there's some uh, colors that. Why would I do that? So if you do that, you're going to need to grab some of your background color and just kind of tap over it. I'll do that over here too. So, and actually you could do, I didn't texture my sky, but you can if you want to. So let's put some of these down in here too. I'm gonna scrape in, this is kind of a medium color. I'm just gonna scrape in some color down here. much. Go back in with a lighter color. Scrape some of that over the top. There we go. Okay, this one is a little bit trickier because it's got the um, weird sides. So it's got this diagonal that comes down. So I'm going to do this dark color right up here and split it down. There's like a little triangle that happens right in here. Goes all the way down to here. I'm just using the kind of edge of my brush or my palette knife to kind of do that in. If you want to, you could color this in a little bit first with lighter colors, you know, with your paintbrush. I didn't do that, I did it all solid, but you could put in a little bit of a value shift with your paintbrush, and that way uh, all you would have to do is put a little bit of texture over the top, and you'd get the idea. Oops. See, it's messy. It's going to do stuff like this because it kind of gets out of control pretty easily. So just go with it. We'll, there, we can always fix it later, but don't try to don't get too upset about it. It's just part of the process. And then sometimes the mistakes are actually kind of in, more interesting, make it more interesting to me. That's the thing about palette knives or, you know, I say quote unquote mistakes, but you know, I'm the randomness of it sometimes makes it more interesting than if you have it fully controlled the whole time. Okay. So it's already kind of taken shape now because we took all that time to do the outline. So let's, uh, Get some of our lighter colors here. I'll use this same one here. Just going to grab some of these dark medium grays and start looking at some of my medium gray colors. So this one is medium gray. And it's actually kind of our background color, so I'm going to have to add some lighter color to it. There's all kinds of different shapes happening in these. Let's get some really light. Ooh. Now that we've got these dark colors in there, we can kind of start putting in some of our front facing buildings that have some of this light catching them. In front. 
get some really bright highlights on a few of these. Right here, there's one building. Get my lighter grays. There we go. Do a little bit of that in some of these. I don't want it to be solid, so if I get it too solid, what I can do is add, use the edge of my brush to kind of scratch through it, or brush, I say, uh, the, the edge of the knife here, or the credit card, and scratch some texture in it. Um, scratch through and create shapes if you wanted to do that, kind of make it a little bit more detailed. Let's put a little bit of color up here on that guy. Okay, let's get some scrapes through there. There we go. There's some really light color on the top of that. And I got a little solid on me, so I'm going to just scrape through it. Take some of that off. Let me go to a smaller section here. I'm going to keep it vertical. It's wanting to bend on me. And then there's a dark building that's like right in front, so I need to put that back in. And a couple of little dots on that. Now we can get as detailed as we want to with these, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. But we need to put a little bit of the light colored highlights in the water too. variations that we really need, but that's okay. It's better to have better more than we need. Get some of these medium colors now and put, put some of those back in. Let me tap with the tip of my brush, or my palette knife to get some of those buildings here that have these real vertical lines in them or horizontal lines I mean Black, put that through there. Go back in with the darker color and tap those in.
some medium color here on this one. It doesn't have a lot of color. It's got some light. There we go. That's good. That worked. This one is almost pure white, so I'm going to grab my white here and scrape down with that. It goes on the sides here. I'm going to look for all of my lightest areas, so that's definitely my lightest value there. Um, but there's some more buildings over here that are pretty light too, so I'm going to try to grab that one, get some little, little brighter area on it. doing hun you're sighing over there so I mean it's time to wrap it up here you're not listening to me no I was listening to the delay what did you say I just said you're being quiet tonight oh. did you <laughs> Uh, well, there's no questions. I mean, good. everything's going good. Going good. Mm -hmm. well, I said you were sighing, so I asked if you needed me to wrap it up. Oh no, 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 no! I had pie before we started, so <laughs> I'm all right. Little little sugar rush. I'm doing good. Oh, Mark made me an angel food cake for my Mother's Day. That um, <laughs> you want to tell him what happened, or should I? Uh, you can tell them. It's it was fine. delicious. Yes. That's all I have to say it's, about it. It's not graded on beauty. Nope. It looked good coming out of the oven. But until you put it on a soda, soda bottle to dry. Back up. Period. Back up. Am I getting in there? My head's getting in there? Just way? a little bit. Okay. <laughs> leaning up, leaning too far yeah. forward. More shades well, of gray. I didn't do my hair, so it's not good. It's just more shades of gray, that's all. Ugh. Ha. <laughs> You're hilarious. So, yeah, with the uh, angel food cake, you know, the final instructions are take it out of the oven and revert it on a, on a rack to cool well. Mm -hmm. It had puffed up so much that if I put it on the rack, it would have stuck to the rack and made a mess and all that stuff. So, okay, I put it on a... Two liter. Man thinking here. Two liter bottle Man upside thinking. down. Yep. You know, so to cool that way. Well, mm -hmm. it kind of fell out of the yeah the pan at some point. <laughs> yeah. It it was pre cut. That's my excuse. <laughs> you didn't have to dirty a knife. It's already in pieces. Yep. <laughs> yep, it was. So I think I have to make another one. It del it was delicious though. Well, Spencer, the the boys have all said that that's what they want for their birthdays from now on because they liked it so much. So you obviously did something right. I am making or a mess I, with this one. This or I did something wrong because now I have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> too floppy. 
making a mess of my water here. I'm gonna scrape through. All oh, these are still wet. I've got black here on my, just kind of getting off what's on here. There we go. Okay. And do this triangle shape here that covers most of this front of this building. Pretty far down. That was a neat building. Maybe one of these days we'll get to go to New York City and visit. I always make plans to go on all these trips and we never go anywhere. <laughs> they sound great until you start thinking about I have to leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we have to actually pay for it my thing is I don't want to go on a plane what the heck did I just do do you see that I had it, I got it on my glove and I didn't feel it oh what did I just say about embracing the mess there we go we're just gonna get a little bit of water Now, I don't want too much water at this point because I don't want to pull off all my color here, but I do want to get off some of those that thick area there. Okay, we're good. What? I'm going to make sure my hand's not dirty. Keep the glove out of the paint. This is definitely not my my uh for somebody who's messy like me when i paint this is probably like disaster waiting to happen here not surprising but now you can see how to fix it so there you go you're welcome i just thought you might need to see that Getting kind of medium colors here. Working out some of these highlights on some of these sides of this one. There we go. This has got a really light highlight right there. Light highlight on this one. Using the edge to draw in some of this. Almost to the end here. Then we can scrape through and create some water effects. And we'll be done. Not too hard. Nope, it was pretty easy for me. Easy for you. Yeah, but this actually would have been a good one for me to have done along with you. I know, you. you could have done it with me for sure. This one's definitely... All right, this weekend I'll work on trying to get the camera over here okay. somehow. <laughs> good luck with that. All right, I'm still not happy with that, so I'm just going to scrape some color into the sky here. Ooh. Looks like a flying saucer. Get some white. There we go. Let's scrape some like clouds type stuff up here. Ooh, they kind of look like star destroyers. You never know. It's, in, you know, Independence Day had those things. <laughs> it does look like a little bit like those Independence Day ships. Or from Star Wars or something, maybe we can. Right. Yep. You know, you totally can leave this part out if you don't want to. It just felt like it needed something that's up here in the sky. on my finger here. I'm not holding your hand Finger later. painting. Too. We're just having fun here. <laughs> We're
We're playing. It's all good. It's all good. Now we need to go back in here and create more of a white on this one. There we go. Get some of this stuff down in the water here. We'll put in a few little reflection type things. I'm trying to get my relatively same area for these highlights so they look like they're in the same place as these ones up here, somewhat. Just add a few really bright highlights to a few of these little areas. I'm going to run this get the credit card and get some white all the way along it if I can. bigger plate, but that's all right. I'm going to use that. There we go. Just angling my water line, and now I'm going to scrape it in here. Make sure I'm keeping it horizontal. Or it doesn't need to be. You're having just way too much fun over there. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun. <laughs> you look like a kid in a kindergarten class <laughs> exactly. just getting into it there. Okay. <laughs> a little bit there, a little bit here. That's what it's all about. I get to play with paint for a living. I mean, come on. It's not fun about that. You gotta have some fun with it. I know, usually I'm so tied up in making sure everything's, you know, just so. Or I like the Tuesday night painting classes because I can kind of play a little bit and have fun. Let go a little bit. Let's grab some of our other colors. I'm just gonna grab a kind of a multitude of colors here and I'm just going to scrape through horizontally in our water here. Maybe do it this way. See what happens. I don't want to cover up a lot of what I've got, but if I've got, yeah, there we go. A little bit of if I do too much, I can go back in with my darker colors and add some back in but I just want it to be kind of messy in the water area here there we go lighter a little bit lighter color there we go okay I think we're good what do you think Look all right Close looks, enough. It looks really cool, actually. Close enough. Yeah. Get some white here. There's some light color on this building here. Here. A little bit more highlight on that one. All right, so let me show you how you can add some color if you wanted to. So if you get it to this point and let it dry and... Uh, yeah, I don't think these buildings had a whole lot of detail, so I'm not going to mess with them. Uh, actually, there's some more light. Now I'm looking here. <laughs> there's some more light color on. I'm sorry. I knew you couldn't do it. <laughs> I knew. You knew. It. Oh, yeah. You knew we weren't done yet. Oh, yeah. Just a look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, we ain't going anywhere, people. No. <laughs> okay, wait. A little bit light, a little bit darker right here. I just noticed there's some dark buildings right in here. Okay. No, I promise. This is last bit. All right. We're good. It looks cool. Looks good up on the monitor. Yeah, they're, these kind of paintings look better from far away. When you get up too close to them, sometimes you you start to see the issues with them. But if you get a little farther away, they're, it's better. I'm going to go right up against that building and pull out to get some of that lighter color. really dark right there. Okay. I'm going to leave it. Someone has to see the reference photo real quick. Okay. Really quickly when you get the chance. There, so... Not too bad. It's close. I feel like this just it's a little bit close to the color of the sky there. I need a little contrast maybe. This is our focal point building. That's why I'm kind of paying a little bit more attention to him because I want to make sure that it looks good. So I'm going to call that good and let me grab my example one here for you. And we'll... Mm, yeah, wait. Now that I'm seeing this up far, far away, I don't like that at all right there. I'm going to come over there and take that painting out of your hand. <laughs> I just need it fixed right there. Right there. Okay. Better. Don't get paint on Done. your new monitor. Oh, that's true. Okay. Don't lean it up against the monitor. Let me get my other thing. And I think I'm going to do blue. Because well, Stella Blue, you want a transparent color or a, or a color uh, plus some glazing medium. So with this, in this case, the... Thalo blue is transparent, so I can just add a little bit of water and brush it over. I've got a paper towel here. Brush it over my canvas here, and it'll pick up the. It'll just like tint. We're just tinting this, and this is that uh, grisaille. I think that's how you say it. So if you wanted to, this is a technique where you paint everything in gray scale and then you rub or glaze over the top with color. It's actually pretty cool. And you still keep the values, but since it's transparent, it's just going to tint everything a little bit. It's kind of like adding a filter, colored filter to your photograph or something. There we go. So there's it. There it is in blue, and we could, uh, you know, we could add other colors with it. Uh, let the blue dry, and then tint other areas with some uh, pink or something to make it more purple in some areas. So I've got it on my other pages there. Better wipe it off before it dries. Okay, we're good. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, if I've enjoyed bringing it to you. We're an hour and 15, so not too bad. Not too we'll long. have to get ready. Hopefully I don't mess up the ending like I did the beginning. Oh, okay. Ooh, you Here, didn't forget. I'll Look give at them a you. building. 
or okay. or blue glove. <laughs> or blue glove. <laughs> <laughs> give him here's stick man here's stick man and i don't know where i can fit a building in here but we're gonna try behind our kitty here we didn't leave myself enough room i probably should have put it in the foreground if i thought about it but oh well there we go stick man is our mascot that we pull him out every show uh, most of the time there's he's got he's got a building now We'll give it a tower, too. There we go. That looks really weird. But, and I think there's some there's some radio uh, spires on some of these buildings, too, that you can put in. Um, probably need to do that on this one. I think there's a one on the top of this building for sure. So. And I might go back in with my brush at this point because I'm not happy with the the um, way this looks around this one so I might just go back in with my light color and pull a little bit of color around it just to kind of make it blend in a little bit better go over the top of that texture area I just dropped my paint on it too many times it's looking a little bit messy, messy. There we go. Okay, I'm happier now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call it good. Thanks, guys, for watching tonight. We appreciate you so much, and we will see you Saturday. We're going to be doing a tractor. So it should be fun. We'll see you then. <laughs> Bye.